morning, guten Tag, bonjour et bonsoir tout le monde, and welcome to our worship service today at Pentecost Sunday here at Trinity Lutheran Church. It's the second time we are celebrating Pentecost together online, and I know that many of you would love to come together in person, myself included, but I am very grateful for the opportunity we still have to connect with one another, to be connected through internet and technique. And I am very thankful for those who do make this possible, working hard in the background. Thank you to all. Special welcome today to Reverend Mark Calvitis. Mark will preach for us, will share communion with us, and he will offer some special music to us together with a friend of him. Welcome, Mark. So let us listen and let us sing to the music or hum along, hoping that God's breath is crushing the shutters of our hearts and minds, filling us with new life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We pray, Pentecost is here. The Spirit moves like a rush of violent wind, appears like fire, is the breath of God. Coming unconcerned with order, but wild with freedom, turning over anything and everything that stands in her way. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Help us to tell about your wonders in our lives. Share how you have transformed our lives. Let us not get stuck in anger or bitterness and political arguments, in anxiety or fear. But even if we are stuck, God, even in the closed rooms of our hearts, you continue to move, to live, to breathe upon us with your mercy and your grace. Now, in this moment, breathe your peace upon us and a fearful world. Now, on this day, breathe your hope upon us and a desperate world. Now, in the moments and days to come, continue to breathe your love upon us and an uncaring world, so that we might transform grudges into generosity, foolishness into common sense, and rejection into being as welcoming as Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and Brother. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let courage rise up, let passion and flame, let love transform. Amen. Our thinking and our 
are speaking, done in your holy name. Motivate all in their seeking, freeing from guilt and shame. Come, come, come Holy Spirit. Pastor, you said a quite strange word today. Pem, 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 Pentecost? Right. Pentecost. What is pem, pem, pem? Pentecost? Hi, kids. Right. Hi, kids. Pentecost means 50 days after Easter. Pentecost is a Latin word. So, and this Latin word, 50 days after Easter, what does it mean? You don't know what it means to celebrate Pentecost? No, of course not. Okay, I think for many people, Pentecost is the day that God made church. The day that God made church? I don't understand the word. I think, I think. You think? Please explain. Okay, I will tell you the story of Pentecost. Pentecost is a special day because we receive, received, everybody received a great gift on Pentecost. Oh, gifts are always good. Yeah. But it began a little bit sad because the friends of Jesus, you know, they were hiding in Jerusalem. Jesus had left them and Jesus went back to God. And with that, Jesus was everywhere. Jesus was in our hearts and he was in heaven and on earth and in our minds, everywhere. But nobody could see him anymore. Ooh, yeah, ooh. -hoo. So the friends of Jesus were taught, of course, to live the life of Jesus and to teach other people about Jesus. But they were afraid. They knew they should be the body of Jesus and the feet and the heart and the hands and everything. But they asked, how shall we do this? Jesus, you are gone. Without you, we can't do anything. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. I will send you a helper. I will send you the spirit. A ghost. Kind of, kind of ghost, a good ghost. So one day the friends were still hiding, you know, the spirit came. And with the spirit, a wind. And the wind and a fire and a good fire. And the wind blew away anger and anxiety and fear and this wind the spirit right filled the hearts of the friends of jesus with courage and peace and strength so they went out really they went out and talked to everybody there they talked to everybody there yeah to everybody there and you know what the good thing is they talked and everybody understood them though many people didn't speak the language the friends of Jesus spoke Aramaic but spoke in other languages for example Greek or Arabic or Hebrew or Syrian whatever but but they could understand each other wow what did they say they said words like and you might just repeat after me and kids and everybody, you're welcome to say these words. In different languages, they said word like peace, peace, espiritu, espiritu, animos, animos, shalom, shalom, viento, viento, love, love, pace, pace, amor, amor. And salam, salam, all the good words they were told. And then the friends of Jesus talked about Jesus and his life and what Jesus told them to do. So, and then they went out all over the world and they talked about Jesus and the peace Jesus gave and the love he had 
and they went into foreign countries, crossed borders and did a wonderful job. So, and I think this is the reason we are here today. So you can say that Pentecost is the day that God made church. It's kind of a birthday, right? It's kind of a birthday. I think that's a great story, how the Spirit was sent to people, and not only to people, to everybody, right? Even to ravens. Even to ravens. Okay. And to kids, to everybody. Everybody carries God's good spirit. Wow. Shall we pray? Okay. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, for the spirit of understanding and love, for the spirit of compassion and fun, for the spirit of happiness, for the spirit of hope. And we ask, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your hope and compassion. Fill us with your peace. And let us live. Let us live in this spirit and be good messengers of you. Thank you, God, for all you gave us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all we say is, Amen. A reading from Psalm 104, selected verses. God, my God, how great you are, beautifully, gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine, and all heaven stretched out for your tent. What a wildly wonderful world, God. You made it all, with wisdom at your side, made earth overflow with your wonderful creations. All the creatures look expectantly to you to give them their meals on time. You come and they gather around. You open your hand and they eat from it. If you turned your back, they'd die in a minute. Take back your spirit and they die. Revert to original mud. Send out your spirit and they spring to life, the whole countryside in bloom and blossom. The glory of God, let it last forever. Let God enjoy his creation. Oh, let me sing to God all my life long, sing hymns to my God as long as I live. Here ends the reading.
A reading from Acts 1, 1 to 21. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And all of a sudden, without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through the ranks. And they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then. Devout pig pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another, their own mother tongues be being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, Aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? So many Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, immigrants from Rome. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Are they drunk on cheap wine? That's when Peter stood up and, backed up by the other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. These haven't had time to get drunk. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophecy, also your daughters. Your young people will see visions. Your old people dream dreams. When the time comes, I, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophecy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. And whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. Selamat Hari Pentecosta, Rokudu Sesatamu. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and Restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the deep, then you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep.
Before I begin the uh, sermon this morning, I'd just like to open with prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, our souls inspire. Enlighten us with your heavenly fire. For if you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. Amen. Well, this morning I want to ask you, when was the last time you opened a photo album? I bet in your house somewhere, uh, there's a photo album of your family. And I invite you now, if you want to, to stop, pause the video, and grab your family photo album. Uh, I know for uh, some of you young people, you might not have a photo album. Everything is kept on your phone. I know that's usually where I keep most of my photos now. But I can remember uh, as a kid having to load film in a camera. Uh, do you remember that? And you had to make sure it wouldn't get exposed and you'd pull the film out and then you had to wait until you had finished taking all the photos on your camera and you drop the film off and a couple days later you pick it up and hope to see that you had taken some good pictures. And it was exciting. You, you would go on a trip and you'd have to wait until all the way that you returned home before you could check to see the photos that you had taken on the trip. You know, photos capture different moments of who we are. They capture different sides of us. You know, um, one photo would not be able to tell you the full story of who I am. Uh, if you saw a photo of me with my family or a photo of me in my clergy shirt, it'd be different than a photo of me in my military uniform or at a party. Uh, you'd really have to have an entire album full of photos to get a sense of who I am. And the photo albums are also helpful because there are people in my life and in my family that I can't remember. I was too young. My great grandmother, for example, I have a photo of us uh, at my baptism and she was there. And my mom tells me that she was blind at the time, but she still could work her way around a kitchen. This, uh, my short little Italian mother could, uh, or grand, great grandmother, I should say, uh, she could uh, make these little donuts uh, for us when we would visit my mom would say, and, and she could do the whole thing in the kitchen completely blind. She knew her way all the way around. And so the photo album also helps Carrie's memory from the past about my family. Um, memories that I was too young to be able to hold on to. And I would argue this morning that in addition to the photo album that my parents gave me about my family, they also gave me one about God. Can you think back at some of the earliest images that you have of God. I know for me, some of the earliest ones were from the church that I attended as a kid, um, and also from this little children's Bible that I got. In the front of my first Bible, there was Jesus hanging out with some little kids, and he was smiling. And that was one image that I got of Jesus. And then at my church, growing up in a Catholic church, there was Jesus hanging up on a cross, and it was a very different image of this, you know, stripped, naked, um, bleeding, hurting Jesus. And then also in the church, there was a picture of Jesus resurrected. Uh, for many of you that grew up in a Lutheran church, you might be used to seeing that white stone picture of Jesus with the arms outstretched, oftentimes behind the altar of the church. Um, how I learned about God was passed on to me from those people entrusted to help raise me. Now, in addition to these images of God, there are also really subtle images of God that we learn from our parents, depending on the type of church we were raised in or even no church at all. For some of you, your image of God as a kid might be more of a blank page, uh, more of a agnostic upbringing where God isn't living and active. It, might be, might not be. Um, for me, um, it was different. God uh, took on a real strict tone when uh, my parents had left the Catholic Church and started attending a Pentecostal church. And I heard a lot from the minister talk about God's will. The preacher would often use language about how we needed to make sure we were following God's will. And I began to get nervous uh, as a child because God's will to me sounded like this tightrope that you had to walk walk and and God was there just waiting for you to fall and point and you know point out your faults and so you were just walking this really really tight 
thin line, so nervous to be outside of God's will and that you didn't want to disappoint him. You know, looking back, you sort of gather all these things as a, as a kid. You, you don't know what's really right and what's wrong. You're hoping that other people will raise you up and trust that. And there comes to a point when you're old enough to sort of take that album and decide what images of God do you trust from your past? And what images do you look at and say, wait, my experience in life, my growing understanding of who God is, this image doesn't seem right. This is not the God that I know. And there's a tension there. And I think this is an essential part of our Lutheran tradition, actually, if we look at you know, this idea that we're ever reforming as a church. Um, recently, I was thinking about this when I was in Louisiana. Uh, I was on military exercise and uh, it was really interesting. There was about 5,000 soldiers and we were practicing in a war game. What would happen if we needed to rescue Canadians, let's say, from an embassy? Um, and so there was a little mini town set up and they had hired uh, local villagers for this town that were just local folks from Louisiana. And we had to see how can we extract some Canadians from this embassy. And there was an opposition force and it was really like intense. You had all this laser tag gear attached to your body so that if you got um, shot, um, every weapon had like a laser attached to it as well, that it would register like, oh no, you have, you've been killed. And if you've been killed, you had to just wait on the side of the road and hope that someone rescues you in the next day or two, and that you've got rations with you. It was a really aggressive uh, exercise. I remember at one point, um, there were some soldiers that were wounded uh, as part of the exercise and had died. And as a chaplain, my job would be to go and give them spiritual care and last rites. And as I was going to give them spiritual care, this tank rolls down the street and I'm running away uh, from this tank, uh, hoping to not get killed by it because if it sets off an explosive the laser tag gear that I have on will register it and I'll be instantly dead and so uh, I'm glad to say I avoided the tank that time uh, but later on when I was uh, in the night in the camp the tank rolled in at night and we didn't see it and it um, lit us up and I had died and I had to wait there to be rescued for 24 hours um, so the next day, someone came and picked me up, and then they fly you over to uh, a morgue. Like, it was just a super intense exercise. And it was so interesting because um, when you're in that environment, you're, you're just surrounded by everyone with, with weapons, and it's a, it's a whole military style um, of, of living. You, you, you as, the, as a soldier, would have a weapon. As a chaplain, I'm the only one that doesn't carry a weapon. I'm supposed to be a reminder that this is not completely normal. And I remember while I was down there, I started reading um, 1 John. Um, and I just, the words jumped out at me from the Bible where it says, God is love and anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And the whole book is just saturated with, if you don't love your neighbor, then you can't say that you follow after God. And I have to say, it hit me over the face or hit me in the head. I forget, well, how would you say that phrase? It knocked me. Knock the wind out of me, we could use that phrase. Because I was like, wow, I, I had forgotten how much love was at the core of, of God's heart and identity. I had, uh, let's say, neglected that part of the photo album that uh, I had held on. And it was a helpful reminder of the power of love as a motivating, transformational force. Um, and that was in my photo album of God that was not only passed down to me by my parents, but also held in the, you could say, the photo album of Scripture that also gives us great images of who God is. And so when I think about this idea of the photo album that we grow up with and, and what resonates and what doesn't resonate, you know, I can't help but thinking of Martin Luther's life and, and his going through as a monk. And you can see in, in, in his uh, desire to please God and he was trying to in his own words earn his salvation and then his uh, monastery sends him away and he begins to read the Bible in its original text and he comes across these passages about God's grace where God is not 
charging us for salvation, but it's just undeserved love and favor that comes from God. And it, it transformed his photo album. That was not the album that he had grown up with. It wasn't what was passed down to him. And he had to make a choice. Does he follow after the God that he has come to believe and experience? Or does he go with what was handed down to him or the people in power say who God is? He had to make that choice and there's consequences for those choices. But I'm grateful that he decided to go after his conscience because I think it helped me today um, because it really created a huge revolution where grace became a deeper focus of the character of God for the world to know and understand. And again, in that reforming tradition, uh, we take the images of God that were passed down to us in our Lutheran faith, and we don't take them blindly. We hold them up and say, okay, where does there need to be more reform? Where do we look at what is taught to us and say, what, what's being missed? Is there other aspects of God um, that God wants us to know and understand in order that every generation that we pass off this knowledge and truth that we've learned, that it would be continually refined so that the world would be continually transformed by having a closer, deeper, more true image of God. And we can see that happening today in the passage that we read from Acts in the Gospel. I think it's incredible that uh, this early church, you know, the, the Jesus that they had known walking around with them was gone. And you can imagine the, the image of God that they had held their leader um, hung on a cross. How shocking that would have been. Um, and yet, how transformative it was when they were gathered in this upper room and these tongues of fire show up and the Holy Spirit shows up in a way and manifests itself. And, and I can only imagine they're thinking, wait a second, our God, you know, died on the cross and now we're still encountering this God? How is God still alive? I'm sure there were doubts. I'm sure there were questions. And I, I love that in this passage, um, the disciples quote from the Old Testament as if to say, wait a second, in this photo album of God that was passed down to us in the Hebrew scriptures, we read that in the last days, God says in the prophet Joel that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, men and women, and even servants will prophesy. What an incredible image of God, that there is nobody too small or outside of the realm of society that's too much of an outcast, that God's spirit will not be poured out into. And that's a transformative image of God that they took and began to share the news and the experience that they had with, of God with others. And it will take time to, to reform and decide what images of God they, they believe. And there's huge divisions that take place about how does the Trinity work? And does God care about this or care about that? And even today, I mean, in Edmonton, how many churches do we have that all say they follow after God and yet will argue about different ways that God would want us to baptize, you know, children or adults or sing uh, songs with your hands raised or like I can I can name a thousand things that we've warred over and fought over as a church arguing about the image of God and and I think sometimes we get caught up in trying to make God in our own image if we like a certain thing it certainly is easier if we can say that God likes that as well but on this Pentecost Sunday, I want to encourage you to look back on your photo album of God. On what has your experience been with God? Think about the times when you had immense pain in your life. Was God there? The times when you had joy. Was God there? Maybe your photo album is pretty slim. Maybe your photo album is pretty big, but you haven't ever revisited it. I think during this time of COVID, we aren't gathering physically together. We don't get to see the image of God living and active in other people 
as easily. It takes a little bit more work, but I also think it's a great opportunity for us to let go of some of the ways that we might be holding on to images of God that are not life-giving, that don't actually resonate with scripture and tradition in our experience. And there may be images of God that make us uncomfortable, that are calling us to uh, live a certain way, that are calling us to make a difference in our community. Um, it might be easier just to have an image of God that doesn't care what we do. Uh, but I think that's the beauty about our faith, that God loves us as we are, but calls us not only for personal transformation, but for transformation of the world. And so I invite you to take some time and see if you can just close your eyes and picture an image of God. And if you don't have many images of God, I invite you to read over the scripture again today that we had. I think what's beautiful about gathering together on a Sunday is that we get to hear about the whole character of God from loving creation to loving salvation to the plan and purpose for our lives for all eternity. And you know what? I think it's not often said enough in the church that it's okay to question and doubt. I know in my photo album of God, there are probably pictures of God that are embarrassing to God. Pictures that God would say, this is not me. This is not who I am. I don't know who gave this to you. Actually, God probably wouldn't say that. Probably say like, whoever gave this to you did not do me justice. And so I pray with humility that we as a church would always carry the image of God with a fear that we don't use the Lord's name in vain, but that we would be humble and willing to continually refine ourselves in our image of God so that we can have a deeper sense of the truth. And so I leave you this morning with a little bit of what's motivated me is that the spirit that came down uh, in Acts, I really believe it's living and active today. And we can see a little image of that spirit in other parts of scripture. And it talks about it in Galatians, that the spirit brings love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if those words are not often what you associate with God, I pray that your life would be filled with more of that spirit today and forevermore. Amen. Go through the wilderness, calling and free.
Let us pray for the Church and the world and for all in need, saying, Come, Holy Spirit, come. For the people of God in every land, for those who continually teach the faith, for witnesses who by their example show your steadfast love, for all who are estranged from the Church and for the strength to walk in your ways, come, Holy Spirit, come. For nations, communities and families torn by violence, for leaders and protesters, for managers and visionaries, for dictators and peacemakers, especially today for the people in Middle East, Madagascar, Brazil and for the people in India, come, Holy Spirit, come. For earth and its riches, for soil and wetlands, trees, bushes, rivers and lakes, oceans and air, and for all the people who inhabit this great creation, for the ability to choose life for all creatures and to honor the welfare of generations to come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For all people who are victims of injustice, for those who are unemployed or underemployed or overworked, for those living on the streets of our city, for everyone affected by divorce, for people struggling with addiction, anger, fear or illness, for all our frontline workers everywhere exhausted and tired, for Dina and her family, and for those we name now aloud or in our hearts. And I lift up to Nolaine, Otto, Irene, Hermann, Mummy, Cheryl, Heinz. I lift up all who are mourning. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For this community of faith, Trinity Lutheran Church, for all sitting now in front of their screens, for all the faithful, asking, seeking, doubting, for newcomers and long familiar faces, for the newly baptized in our church, everyone dearly missed, for the pastors and lay leaders, and for Bishop Larry Korrendorfer and his assistant Prima and their families, come, Holy Spirit, come. Into your promises we entrust all those whose needs are known to us today and those whose needs are only known to you, God. Grant peace to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, Trinity Lutheran Church. I am recording this from the St. John and St. Luke's Chapel here at Canadian Forces Base, Edmonton. And before we begin communion today, I invite you to hit pause if you like and grab some wine or grape juice and some bread to join in the communion service. Together, let us join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord our God, through Christ our Savior, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the Church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Pour upon us this Pentecost Sunday your spirit of love, O Lord, and unite all the wills of those who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray in confidence with the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Spirit be with you, to guard you at your back and your front, from your head to your feet, so that an island you shall be in the rough seas, a hill shall you be on the land, a well shall you be in the desert and a light shall you be in the dark. God's peace to all of you. Amen. God's peace be with you. Like the murmur of the dove song, like the challenge of her flight, like the vigor of the wind's rush, like the new flame's eager might, come, Holy Spirit, come to the members of Christ's body, to the branches of the church in faith assembled to our midst as gift and sign. Come, Holy Spirit, come. With the 
healing of division with the ceaseless voice of prayer, with the power to love and witness, with the peace beyond compare. Come, Holy Spirit.